So I'm going to jump into a very particular example of a subtraction of a PSF based on your observations. And this is uh, the way, uh, the reason why we choose this example is because this is a fairly common question, right? All right, so I do have my, my PSF. Some people want to fit the PSF because either one, they want to remove the PSF so they can see extended emission, or one of the diffraction spikes of the PSF is just falling on top of a nebula. Other people want to fit the PSF so they have accurate positions of the PSF itself, of the star, right? So in any of those cases, what you need is a reliable and accurate PSF simulation, which is the whole point of WebPSF and the whole point of this notebook, right? How you can create the most accurate and more relevant simulation of a PSF that is relevant to your particular observation. Uh, again, here we're going to use a particular observation for our from our sensing program. Our sensing program uh, collect images every couple of days uh, and do the analysis every couple of days. And as a byproduct of that program, we also collect images in the long wave channel, which is one of the images that I'm going to be using now. Note that the reason why you can just download this particular uh, observation is because all these images from the sensing program are publicly available through mass, so you don't need any token or anything. So all the information that we do derive from the sensing, either the images, the observations, and the OPD maps are all publicly available. In this case, I'm just going to do a quick setup. Also, the reason for this example in particular is that I'm using a very common functions that you get through photo utils, through AstroPy. So there is nothing uh, too complicated except for the standard routines that you'll find when you do your astronomical uh, investigations, right? So. Uh, So if you run this, this is how it looks. Uh, you have a very large PSF. This is the long wave channel. This is the P the target star that we use for our sensing program. In the long wave channel, it's saturated, but you don't have these large diffraction spikes. This also goes with the idea that maybe this is your case. This maybe you just want to remove very large PSF from your field of view. And typically those large PSF are saturated, right? Because the only way for you to see these large diffraction spikes is if the PSF is bright enough to see those uh, diffraction spikes. And if it's bright enough, it's likely saturating the, the core of the PSF. Know that in this case, as a byproduct, these diffraction spikes almost cover the entirety. So this is the entire 2040A by 2040A uh, the full array of NIRCAM, right? So these are large uh, PSF. But in any case, if you notice, there is sort of like a small notch here of galaxies that we're going to use uh, as an example. So if I focus on that particular region of my image, I see this, right? A typical PSF that is uh, on top of maybe some science case that I'm interested in. In this case, maybe what it looks like a, a, a galaxy merger, it have this really bright PSF there. For some people, if you're studying galaxy mergers and extended emission, the PSF is bothering you. But if you are someone that is looking for photometry and accurate positioning of stars, then maybe what is bothering you is the uh, galaxy merger, right? So it depends on your science case. In both cases, you need to fit the PSF. Uh, in this case, I'm not doing anything uh, uh, weird, but just once I find the source, and like I said, these are very standard tools for you to use. I can just re-center my, my PSF subtraction just for a nice visual uh, uh, inspection of the image itself. Now, um, I can recenter that, and now I have my working case completely set up. 
I have my arrays, everything is set up to start doing the PSS subtraction. Now, what we're going to do is use the setup sim to match file. This is the function that we just used before. Uh, it's going to take that long wave image and it's going to do all the setup of a WebPSF based on that. And it's going to be using the position of the star that I just calculated before, right? When I did my star finder. I can always check that uh, my setup is correct uh, and it is giving me information about which face map was the one used for this simulation, which is the closest to the observation itself. Now, one way to check that you did indeed have all the detector effects applied to your observation is that if you log open the header of the simulated PSF, if you scroll down to the bottom of that header, you see that you have the charge diffusion model, is the 2D Gaussian that I mentioned before, with this uh, sigma for charge diffusion. The WebPSF does have some default values of that sigma value. Uh, on the first few cells of the of the notebook, I show you how you can change that value as part of a dictionary for the charge diffusion model. Uh, these are optimized for a set of wavelengths. I can see that maybe for your particular observation, you're using a different filter. This is something that you may want to change if you find that maybe a PSF that is a little bit more broader because of this effect uh, fits better your observation. Remember that this is just a proxy of how charge diffusion works. And charge diffusion is a very complicated nonlinear uh, effects on the detector, but it is wavelength dependent. And in this case, we are just having a single value as default for everything, right? So it's not unreasonable for you to play with that uh, with that value. And then we see the IPC effects are also included here. So you have uh, information about uh, which file was used, which kernel was used for that IPC, and those kernels are included on the WebPSF data. So you can always go back there and see the kernel that it was used. But this is a way for you to check whether or not you had the detector effects included. This also applies when you're doing um, a cube or gridded PSF. You can also create a grid of PSF, uh, and those you can also always check the headers to see if you have the detector effects inside. Now I can create a, a model of that uh, PSF using a normal tools like PhotoUtils, a fit table image model. So I'm just translated the web PSF simulation that I just did based on setting up that from my observation. And I'm just transforming that into a model that PhotoUtils can use for my PSF subtraction. So nothing uh, different there. And I create now an object that do have that model and how I'm planning on subtracting that image or that model from my uh, images itself. And I can see that after I do the fit, so it was a successful fit, I can see that is really fitting that model PSF that I just defined to every single source that it's found on that image. In my case, I was restricting myself to the source inside that cutout pair. But in principle, if you have an observation that have a bunch of point sources and you run this, it will give you a list of all the PSF or all the sources that you have on that image. And this part, what it's going to do is fit the PSF model to all the points that you are passing. Uh, and there is a way in which you can just even pass a list of the things that you want uh, the model to fit. In this case, I only have one image and it gives you some information about that. And I can create a residual. A residual is basically subtracting uh, from my observation the fitted scale 
image of WebPSF to the sources that it found on, on the observation itself. And then we get to something like this. Uh, what I'm showing you here is the original uh, image. Uh, and here on the right is the subtracted PSF. As you can see, we were uh, very successful in removing the diffraction spikes. And this is by no means a perfect uh, subtraction, but this is using the default values that we have in WebPSS, in particular for the charge diffusion. So I can see that maybe for different filters, if you want to try something different, and uh, maybe something that is not too aggressive when you do the subtraction, that charge diffusion uh, dictionary is the one that you want to change to start feeding uh, and testing uh, your the fit of your PSF. So that's something that that uh, you can do. I, like I said, this example is intended to show you one way to do the PSF subtraction using commonly used functions from Astro from the AstroPy and PhotoUtil libraries. There are many ways in which you can do this, but basically the most important things are for you to create an accurate representation of the PSF with WebPSF. We know how to do that. Then finding a good centroid for your PSF because you need to have a good centroid to do the PSF subtraction. And then for the PSF subtraction, either you use a convenient function like this, or you can use a function that your own function that will scale the PSF to your observations or for the central, you can use phase correlation. You can use any method that you want to find the good centroid. So when you subtract your PSF, you do it correctly and you don't have any offset because then that can have uh, uh, some issues depending on your science case, right? So this is just one way to do it.